Welcome to Knock Bro Nation. Welcome back, guys. I'm Jarrell. And I'm Josh. And today we're here to review the mid-season nine finale for The Walking Dead. Evolution. Evolution. And what an amazing, creepiest episode I've ever seen in my life. The Whisperers are here. Yep. We only got a taste, but we got a big taste. And we'll have to wait until the second half to really dive into this. But oh, we got... Some awesome tracking skills by Daryl. We got creepy explanations by Eugene and and seeing the whispers, Negan, and um, some bad mojo between the communities. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, let's, let's kick it off. Let's get right into it. Um, we're gonna take community by community. I think is how we'll do it. Uh, and we'll start with the hilltop. Um, young Henry is making his way. Uh, at the hilltop, um, apprenticing with um, uh, metal worker uh, or blacksmith Sutton is his name. Earl. Earl. Yep. Earl. Earl Sutton. Earl Sutton. Which yep. is the guy that was imprisoned uh, by Maggie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was pretty uh, 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 a coincidence there. Yeah. As we'll get into. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So. Um, so pretty much like yeah. uh, so Carol and Henry. There wasn't much that happened here. Yeah, I Carol mean, and Henry have arrived. Um, we also got the arrival of Michonne and Magna's group at the same time, basically. And this is where we get to see that there has been a serious relationship breakage in between the communities. Breakage. Breakage. Um, because they would not allow Michonne in with weapons. And when they got in there, Tara you know, didn't look very happy to see her. Nobody or, did. Or Enid. Nobody did. They didn't look happy to see her. Um, and I think Michonne you know. even comments on that to Sadiq that like, nobody likes me right now or nobody is happy to see me or something like that. But I mean, you could clearly see that there was obvious tension between Michonne um, and the rest of the Hilltop. And, um, you know, it's even the way Tara spoke, mm -hmm. like she was just so, you know, <laughs> standoffish did who are these almost, people yeah it was almost like know. she didn't want michonne even there yeah who are these people well you have to wait till they can stay here you'll get your weapons back tomorrow when jesus gets back and he'll make the decision on whether or not they can stay or not uh, michonne did mention something like to sadiq where kind of like or actually she mentioned it to carol where it's kind of like it seems like the decision she made was to kind of the communities need to take care of their own now. So maybe they stop trading with each other. That's why the, the visits have gotten farther and farther out. So Michonne made it a point to point. Carol that this would not continue. Like right. just because she was there didn't mean that Alexandria was back into the fold right. of the communities. Carol because, really wants this her to get onto this fair because they need yeah, this that fair. Yeah, fair was mentioned um, again. And, yeah. you know, it was Carol's way of telling Michonne, look, this is a way to bring all the communities back together. And it would be nice to have Alexandria's presence there. And this is where Michonne's like, you know, it ain't going to happen. We've taken care of our own now. So something between the time skip happened and... Hopefully we'll find out more there. Um, Henry blacksmithing, that is uh, from the comics. That was a big role for Carl. So Henry is getting a lot of Carl's um, roles now. Um, Enid and uh, Alden are together. And uh, are, are they? I They were kissing. <laughs> oh, oh, they were? <laughs> yeah. So when I completely missed that. When Earl, when Earl was asking Henry if he was going to come over for dinner tonight, Henry uh, turned around because Enid came over to say hi. And Henry has been excited to see her because he's older now. Well, there goes the um, Dante theory. Yeah, so uh, he turns around. He was going to ask Enid if she wanted to have dinner. And she turn, he turns around and he sees Eden and Alden kissing. And then he's like, all right, yeah, I'll come to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so um, in the comics, there is a character called Dante who actually ends up being in a relationship with Maggie down the road. Spoiler mm -hmm. alert. Yeah. Uh, but we always thought that Alton was going to be that Dante character. And right. it, it obviously turns out that's not the case. Yeah. Um, so the other piece at the Hilltop, I did not like the piece with... Now, this kind of goes with the comics with Carl, but how Henry ends up in the jail, I didn't like the kids, man. I thought that kids part was stupid. It like, was, let's it, play with a walker in a pit and throw was, darts and filler. ropes at it. What like, I did like about this is... That he killed it? Um, well, no, before yeah. that. When they first meet, when he first goes up and meets these 
kids oh, how they from know the him? community. How yeah. they know him. Hey, yeah. you're the young boy with the stick the that fought the stick. in the war. Yeah. Um, That's he's, cool. It's almost like he's famous. He's famous awesome. for that. But he was so, like, he's so nervous. Like, they make <clears throat> yeah. Henry, like, so... He's been so sheltered. You know, he's been... He hasn't been to Hilltop in a long time. He's with, you know, at the kingdom with Carol and his mom and everything. But he's just... He's nervous to be away from his mom and his yeah. dad and nervous being in a new community. It also showed it as well when he was eating by himself, yeah. you know, before that. Like, it was similar to Carl. Carl was the same way. We won't get into too much stuff with the comics, but, but, um, but yeah. You know, another thing here is that, uh, you know, he mentions to them – well, they look up to him, right? Because mm-hmm. unlike – unlike him they have never been out of the hilltop community they've grown up there and here's yeah. this kid who has to my recollection i think he's even been to alexandria uh, i would think if probably if, is ezekiel but he's been everywhere mm-hmm. and they haven't yeah um so they invite him out to do what they usually do at night which is hang out in a log cabin have drink some moonshine, moonshine which he got um, drunk off one <clears throat> sip that's some powerful moonshine. Plus, he's a kid. Well, that's understandable. Oh, well, yeah. He was like, woo! <laughs> but, he, but it was like he immediately did that. Yeah, he like immediately fell back like, whoa, this is what you guys <laughs> do in your spare time? Like, <laughs> it was, you know, it, it could have been his like third or fourth drink for all we knew. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, and then they proceed to play a lame-ass game of throw the rope around the walker. Kind of like a carnival game where they're throwing the little hooks around the Pepsi bottles or the, yeah. the Coke bottles. Ridiculous. Well, I, I kind of loved it because I love when Henry killed it because it was for me. It was kind of a callback to Morgan. Um, no, it was a callback to uh, uh, what was it? What was her name? Lucy, the girl. Look at the roses. Look uh-huh. at the flowers. <clears throat> you know, like how she was wanting to. She saw them as like people, and she wanted to befriend them and play with them. It kind of reminded me of that. Like these kids are playing a game with this thing. Oh, from the kid's point of view. Yeah, Yeah. from the kid's point of view. This Um, is a thing that will kill you. And Henry just went down there and was like, you're done. Like you're not going to do this. It kind of reminded me of Morgan. Again, he got a lot of his training from Morgan. um, And and I believe he read the book. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think he apologizes to the walker as he kills it, Mm -hmm. um, which obviously is a callback to Morgan because Morgan buries them or did bury them and and you know yeah. all life is precious right um but yeah I, I thought that was cool yeah so um but yeah he goes into jail you put him in jail um but he goes up to the front gate and begs to come back in he does yeah like that's he how he gets busted yeah because he was like well how did you end up outside the gate come on, it comes, so but it's henry he doesn't know what to do um so they put him in jail for drunk and disorderly it's two days um so they have to wait uh, until jesus comes back to decide whether he can stay and continue his apprenticeship apprenticeship um he wants to stay because he wants to show his parents especially carol um he wants to make her proud and he now, the kingdom is relying on him and it I, seems like the kingdom is like having some hard times yeah for some reason yeah absolutely you know? um they're on hard times right now. you know um i did see a, a facebook post uh, on skybound skybound insiders or something like that was they were like drunken disorderly is two days come on people but what we need to remember here is the last person that got drunk and had an incident tried to kill the leader of the hilltop. Earl. So, Earl, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that's what I was going back to saying earlier. So, um, I would think that because that incident, being drunk and disorderly, is probably kind of high end on, on the crimes and, yeah. and uh, probably not taken too kindly to, to that, that happening in the community anymore. Definitely not. So, um, Michonne does hear word that they are out looking for Eugene. Um, and she wants, uh, actually they, they want to go out and help Rosita does wake up. She's freaking out and she wants to get out there and help them because she's like, look, they have no idea what they're dealing with. I got to get out there and help. But, uh, that's kind of like the hilltop piece right there. Yeah. I think that's it. You know, um, Henry was nice enough to give his, uh, an advance and the first couple of, uh, uh, things of his, uh, first advancement of his wages, couple weeks out so he got some nails and screws and supplies for the for the uh kingdom which is another nod to hey look maybe the kingdom isn't doing so well mm-hmm. um and that kind of goes back to michonne cutting off access um <clears throat> if michonne is no longer part of the communities then she, alexandria is not trading mm-hmm. um so it's gonna hurt everyone and and it seems like the kingdom is taking a brunt of that yeah it seems like they're not doing very well 
So, yeah. uh, so the only stuff at the Alexandria was with Father Gabriel and Negan. Um, loved, Negan is pushing I, his buttons. I loved this conversation. Um, it, it first starts with just Father Gabriel trying to talk to him um, and, and meditation. And yeah, all that kind of stuff. yeah, he's like. Doing the, doing the yeah. thing around the bowl or whatever. Yeah. You can um, see he was like getting to Negan like, this is annoying. Like, <laughs> yeah, but Negan tries to get back at him. Um, mm-hmm. Basically saying that, you know, he's found things to occupy his time while he's in prison. He knows that he's accepted the fact that he is going to be there the rest of his life, which was yeah. uh, not something that we're used to hearing from Negan. A kind of a sound of uh, knowing that he's defeated, um, but also that the window that they installed is actually providing him um, kind of like TV, what uh, an equivalent of TV pre-apocalyptic uh, world. Yeah, people who are standing out there talking to each other kind of forget that he's in there. So yeah. he's hearing all these conversations. He mentioned something that he heard something about Rosita and he Father heard Gabriel Rosita talking about someone. Yeah, talking about someone. And Father Gabriel thought it was him, and Negan pointed out. He's like. I didn't say it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so just he's pulling at the strings a little bit to see if he can get under his skin. Um, Father Gabriel at first was just, you know, being nice and not having an issue with it. Up until he sees the, the he sees the he comes back later after um, seeing the writers come in from Hilltop about Rosita being hurt, then that's when he gets sloppy. So he gets really pissed off and he's upset. That, you know, he's telling Negan for once in your life to shut your mouth, be yeah, quiet. Because what was awesome you know? is Negan is saying, I, you know, we need to realize that, uh, you know, the nose, sensory of the nose brings up smells uh, from out of our body. And, talk about changing his bedpan. Yeah, yeah, and what you're smelling is my shit and you have to change that, right? Yeah, <laughs> so just tell him to be quiet. And then he says that, you know, Rosita's hurt and I, I, w- I want to be there for her. But I have to be here with you. Someone has to be responsible for you. Yeah. And he leaves. He slams the freaking uh, the gate closed. And I thought at first, uh, yeah, it's not locked. You didn't lock it exactly. And even the secu- even the even the guy who was also with there who had to uncuff Negan. I didn't realize. You know, I thought that was pretty slick that they actually do cuff they Negan to the bars yeah. uh, anytime that they're in the cell. So yeah. they must be worried that he obviously is going to do something when yeah. they're in his cell and he's you know not he's he's you know uncuffed. Um, but um, yeah, I, I mean that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I immediately knew. Yeah. So he breaks out. Um, he's hitting the ball, you know, throwing the ball up against the wall. It goes outside the gate. And he could see the door shimmying. And he pushes it open. And uh, he's like, all right, it's time to go. All right. And, and he's ta- out. Takes the ball and just, yeah, I don't it. need this anymore. I'm going to go. I'm out. So, <laughs> um, but Which yeah, is cool. So you know, Negan's out. I did think it was kind of cool that he he does apologize to Father Gabriel after mm. before Father Gabriel storms out saying, "Look, I didn't know right. uh, what's going on." So um, I don't know. Do you think Negan's changed? I I think well, and we'll get into it in other videos, but I, I think we're probably going to see like the comic book version, version of him Negan. come out in the second half. Um, he's going to stick to, you know, we're going to assume he's getting out and going back to sanctuary and maybe from the promo club. Yeah. From the promo, he's got to find Lucille, but we won't, but, um, I think he will change. I think he's going to, they're going to adapt his comic book version of it, but, uh, well, there'll be other videos come out for that. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the meat of it guys. And right off the bat, we lose, uh, a wonderful character. We lost a wonderful character. Uh, we just, you're just going right into it. Aren't oh yeah. You? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> going right into it. We... <laughs> Yeah, we, we lost Jesus, guys. Um, and um, it is confirmed, guys. It so, is confirmed. It, so it wasn't any type of um, cliffhanger, hope that he's alive. Um, I initially thought, look, maybe he's just wounded. They're faking us out. And I actually replayed it. And that knife goes all the way through Jesus's body yeah. from the bottom half, the lower body, up through yeah. his chest. Um, the he's whole, dead. The whole night sequence is creepy as hell. And, and really quick, you know... Uh, it wasn't like a surprise death or anything. I mean, it was to us, but it wasn't to the actor. So Tom Payne is, is mentioned before that he's been frustrated for quite some time about his, his lack of his character progressing. Why is this um, shit always got to come out after the death? Like, I know. I mean, I, you know, and so granted, he, I get it. Look, I wouldn't want this to come out before the character dies. Cause then, you yeah. know, oh, 
my character, my favorite character is going to die. But why do they got to release this information? If you weren't happy, right, just be good with it. But some of these articles were prior to you know either during filming or even before, like even a year before. Um, but he hasn't been happy. He said that he wouldn't be very unhappy if they got rid of him. And he even said that Angela Kang was very surprised that he was so laid back when he got the call. Um, so unfortunately they let a character go, but anyway, let's get into it though. <laughs> this whole sequence, um, this whole night sequence was absolutely terrible. But, but even before the night sequence, <laughs> right? So we start off with Daryl, Aaron and Jesus. Their whole sole purpose is looking for Eugene. Now the entire time that they do this. They are almost being followed. They are being, they are being followed tracked. by a herd. They first come upon this herd. You know, they're above the hill. They're looking down. We saw this in the preview shot. Um, there's about 50, and they all comment to each other, this is weird. They are they are circling. They are acting abnormal. This mm -hmm. isn't how – have you ever seen them act like that? Jesus asks Aaron, and Aaron says no. Mm -hmm. um, but they have to get out of Dodge. They, the storm is coming and they have to find Eugene. So I thought it was really clever that um, uh, Daryl takes a <laughs> old school alarm clock. I thought it was like a grenade at first. Right. And tosses it to distract the herd. We know that sounds distract the herd. Well, which was interesting because he said that the, 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 the wind is carrying the sound. And then as you could hear it, you could hear the herd mm -hmm. getting closer because it's carrying the sound. So... He's trying to divert the herd away, and then when they get to the barn with Eugene, um, you know, Eugene is, you know, explaining what the hell's going on. They're whispering, we got to get the hell out of here. And they uh, they see that the herd has increased in size. Yeah. And they're and like, Eugene, okay. Eugene has said, look, they're looking for me. This isn't a normal herd. Mm -hmm. It's passed me three times already mm -hmm. so it's circled back and it's passed him three times already meaning right. it it has come yeah back and it and it comes back to them again so exactly. they, they get some distance and they're seeing that they're on their tail so they get some distance and you know jesus wants to stay to help divert daryl says no you guys get back i'll help to divert this them. was an awesome conversation though because this was good they started that conversation talking about what was at hand the fact that these walkers are talking Right. Um, and, and Eugene was, he was without, without he was knowing what was to, going on. But he was yeah. trying to conceptually work through his mind. Work through okay, the science. how is this possible? Look, their brain isn't completely dead. Right. They can possibly learn how to talk again. And maybe, <laughs> this was the creepy part, yeah. maybe even uh, know learn. tactically yeah. learn how learn. to... Yeah, how to track people. How to track them. Yeah. yeah. It was just, and it was and cool. then Jesus is like, well, you know... First of all, Daryl ain't having it. He's like, that's crazy. Right. But Jesus is like, well, it's crazy to even have dead people walking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just thought that was cool before they decided to do what you were going to say. Yeah. So, I mean, so Daryl says, look, you guys get back. I'll divert the herd. So he goes down the road a little bit with dog, the dog. I hate that. <laughs> I know. Give it a name, guy. Um, and so he, he sees the herd coming and he's lighting off firecrackers. And so the herd begins to come towards him. And then all of a sudden... They turn away and start still going in the direction where Aaron, Jesus, and and uh, Eugene are going. And Daryl's looking at this like, what the, f what the hell's going on? Yeah. Like, why is this not working? It's so weird. And oh, we just, it's so great. You get the sense that he finally starts believing Eugene. Because for a, a little, split yeah. second, they're like, okay, we need to get him back to the hilltop. Which they do, but it was almost like a sense of... Something's wrong with Eugene. We need to get him back. Right. Uh, he's obviously traumatized. Uh, but when Daryl can't re revert that herd, he starts thinking, okay, something is not right here. Something's not right. So we get into the graveyard area, and this is where the battle ensues. They're kind of cut off. They're trying to get out a gate, which is locked. They're trying to kind of dig underneath so they can push it as much as they can. Daryl finally meets up with them. Um, what's awesome is like as you know, they're fighting walkers, Michonne arrives, Magna arrives, Yumiko arrives. So they're helping them get out. And so they basically get all of them out of the gate except for Jesus. He's going to say, and Look, Aaron. Aaron Aaron was in there at first. He was in there first and they're fighting off some walkers. They're fighting and they're then fighting. He tells and then Jesus Aaron to leave. says, go. Right. He's like, I'll hold them off. It'll just be a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and we then, get badass Jesus. Like we get badass he, Jesus. He is just handling these, these walkers. And you yeah. get the sense that like, look, 
he's easily going to be able to handle at least 15 to 20 with his skills easily mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. something isn't right something's not right so we get to see again the from the previous circling shot the walker that was in the white little gown who's turned and looked at them he does a nice little juke move before Jesus cuts his head off juke. and stabs Jesus. And as he stabs him, he says, you are where you do not belong. Now, I often have to add, look, so I watch my Walking Dead in my living room um, and it's so loud that like, well, it's not that loud, but I have to keep it down because my kids are sleeping. <laughs> so I will every once in a while have to like text you or message you over our chat saying, what did he just say? Or, you know, like yeah. I, I didn't even pick up on, uh, Enid kissing. <laughs> so like, yeah. So, um, that phrase was badass. You are where you not belong. And just the emotion from Aaron seeing that happen. He runs right back in there to kill them. You start to see other whisperers coming forward, rushing them. And then the one who killed Jesus gets killed by Yumiko's arrow, or actually by Daryl's arrow, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. But then Michonne, Yumiko, and a bunch of them start coming in and they actually kill that walk or the, the whisperer. They see the back of its head. They see that it's been sewn. sewn. Yeah. And so Daryl cuts it open, pulls the mask off, and they actually finally see that there is a human being. And I think also Michonne, she looked at her blade and saw, I think she looked noticed it was real blood. Not the dark red blood of walkers, yeah. but bright red blood of a human being. Yeah. And then they finally see the face, and that's where the episode ends. It leaves us on a cliffhanger that they're well, not out of there yet, but they're not they're out of there. Out. And as they zoom away, we hear they're, the whispers of keep them surrounded, keep, keep them, them together. together. Yeah. Um, so, so sick. It was sick. It uh, was like, goosebumps, guys. Yeah. And the set just... Be prepared. This second half is going to blow our minds. We have it's going to be epic. Yeah, and we'll get into predictions later because yeah, that's yeah. we have three months. We we have three months, so there are going to be lots of videos coming for Walking Dead. Um, we'll go over. We'll do a breakdown of the promo, the first look of yeah. uh, season nine B. Um, we'll be we'll another do discussion. We'll like, do discussions. You know, what's the status of Maggie? Um, what's the status? What's Negan going to do now that he's out? Um, how is Alexandria going to mend the relationship with the communities? What's the fair going to be like? We have tons of things tons to of talk stuff. about. Uh, you know, comparisons between the show, the comic, things that we know that's going to happen in the comic. Will that translate into the show? Are they going to change things around? So stay tuned for those, but definitely let us know what your thoughts were of Evolution in the mid-season finale. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I think they are hitting the nail on the head right now that this season is going to be been, epic with you know, the whisperers guys i always heard the the disdain for season eight and season seven and and i never believed it you no. know it i always thought every season was good i'm a hardcore walking dead fan call me a fanboy i don't whatever mm -hmm. but watching this season like or this this half so far it has greatly outdone the last few seasons so i will admit that that yeah. The writing has been on point other than the whole stupid uh, Ben crap. Or not Ben, but Henry crap. Oh, with the kids? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> filler. We'll, we'll definitely get more. And, you know, we're, he's going to get more of Carl's role. So, we'll definitely, definitely stay tuned for more videos. We'll be definitely breaking down a bunch of this stuff. We have three months to go over all this shit. Yes, we do. So, <laughs> hey, if you like this episode... Uh, Definitely let us know what you think. Uh, if you got through this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Follow us at Knockbro Nation on Facebook and Twitter. And stay tuned for more Walking Dead videos. Season 9 coming soon. We're Knockbro Nation. And we're out. The Walking Dead has put me into contact with so many thousands of people all around the world. Um, and that's honestly been the biggest gift. I'm very grateful for everything the show has given me. And every day I've come to work on this episode, I've been excited to come to work and jumping for joy. Thank you very much. Um, and that Hi, was always Mom. kind of exciting for me. Mom, they killed Jesus. Thank you. Hey, yes, sir.